Hi, I'm Nyamin CEO. CEO, and in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to create the Tron Grid Effect. Um, so the first thing I'm going to show you is how textures work in Cinema 4D. So let's just open up Cinema 4D document, um, so that we have a clean slate to work with. I'm going to show you um, just a quick example. If I just create a new texture by double clicking here, we're going to create new material. Now I'm going to double click on this texture to edit it, as it shows the material editor. Now under color, you can also rename it, but under color, I'm going to go to texture, load image, and then I'm going to select this one right here, image one. Um, it's going to ask you to create a project search path. If you want to, you can, but I'm just going to click no. And as you can see, the Honorstead's QR code is now wrapped around our texture. And if we add a quick floor and um, apply this, you can automatically see that it's um, being tiled all over the floor. And if I just um, preview from a uh, top perspective and I render it out, you can see it keeps tiling itself on forever. So that's basically how textures work. Um, I'm just going to delete this and um, this. So we can also use this um, um, effect to our advantage. For example, we don't need to create the whole grid. We can, oh, we can, but we don't have to because we can just create a certain section of the grid and it'll automatically tell it for us. And we can alter the sizes of, of the squares of our grid image that we're going to create in Photoshop now to change the overall square size of our grid. Um, so I'm just gonna head into Photoshop now and I'm gonna create a new image, file new and create a new document that is a perfect square so for example 500 by 500 you can use a bigger image that will give you better results but I'm just gonna use 500 by 500 because it's just an average size so you, now you have to go to edit and fill and fill it with the color black. You can also just select black from here and click OK. That will create um, the background for our grid. Now uh, create a new layer. And now we need to draw um, two lines one going down and one going horizontally. Now, this is um, uh, good for my size because if you visualize it, uh, if I draw quarter, a quarter, four quarters of squares, and it's tiled above and over here and over here you can imagine that it'll make a full square um, so you can make it um, smaller for example you can have nine different squares so that way um, the corner squares will be tiled together the, these squares will be tiled on top of each other and so on so just um, hold down shift with the rectangular marquee tool you can also use your shape tool or your pen tool to do this but I'm just gonna use a marquee tool so I'm on a new layer I'm just gonna draw my um, line and I want it to be about that much so now um, go to edit and fill and under color select a color that is in the top right section of your color palette um, it can be any one of these, a yellow, green, blue, purple, red, whatever suits you, but I recommend having it in the top right hand corner because it generally gives a better effect um, in my opinion. So I'm just going to choose like a light bluish color around that. The hex code is 00B4FF. I will include that in the description on our website. And I'm just going to click OK. Now we have our line. Now you can hit Command D on Mac and Control D on Windows to deselect. Now hit Command A on Mac and Control D on Windows to select the whole frame. We can now um, center it using the tools provided for us in the menu on the point tool. Now you can again deselect. Now, according to what you have in mind, you can alter this, but I'm just gonna duplicate this layer by doing Command J on Mac and Control J on Windows then Command T on Mac and Control T on Windows, then just holding Shift and rotating um, the second um, copy of the line so that is at a 90 um, degree angle. Now you can imagine now that if I have the same thing over here, over here, and over here, I'll make a perfect square. 
and same goes for all the other sides. Now, if I activate my ruler tool, which is Command R, Mac, and Control R on Windows, I can see that um, I have all my sizes and my dimensions available to me, so I can actually drag out guidelines to help me position multiple uh, ver multiple um, versions of these lines. For example, if I duplicate this middle line again, this um, horizontal line, and I move it up slightly, and I move this one down slightly. I'm not. I'm just doing this roughly. For those of you who are wondering, and then I just move this to here, and then I duplicate it, uh, move it here. Um. Yeah. Here. You can see and uh, visualize that um, this will be tiled on top, this over here, and so on and so on and so on. But I don't want any of that, and I'm okay with what I have. Now, the next step is really important. You have to go to File, and save for Web and Devices. Make sure that the format is um, GIF, and click Save. I'm just gonna save on my desktop as a grid and I'm gonna click enter and you can save the PSD as well but I'm just gonna save the GIF and I'm gonna go to cinema 40 now add floor and double click here and double click on your texture now under color again we're going to load the image of the grid you can see it right there and click open and click no so now we have our basic texture and if I just throw that onto my floor instantly you can see that we've got our basic grid now under texture click um, copy channel and under luminance take it and um, paste the channel that will make it glow from within kind of and under reflection take it and give it a brightness of 4 and then go to texture and for now and give it a mix strength of 84 and then under glow we're gonna have this at 223 add a strength at 500 is okay and then just deselect the, the specular um, and now this seems okay so if you do a quick render once more you can see it's actually glowing but the reason we see no reflections is because there's nothing really there to reflect so if I just put in a simple square and render it out you can see that we have a pretty realistic reflection but as I said before because our size of the image is only 500 by 500 um, you can see that it's not com a completely smooth reflection but you can have a bigger size for higher quality and you don't hear need to worry about your perspective and um, the sky is showing as a different color to, to the floor because the sky usually shows as black and this is black anyway so we have nothing to worry about okay so let's just um, delete our cube and I'm gonna show you how to make some Tron style text now first let's just go into our render settings and optimize this thing for HD and now under effect, get an ambient occlusion, which will give us realistic shadows. Well, we don't really need shadows, but you never know what, what results you might get, right? <laughs> so under effect, go to global illumination now. And I'm going to do something now that you might not have seen before. I'm going to set this to QMC. And what QMC, IR plus QMC does, is it basically gives you a higher quality um, render. Of course, it does take longer than the normal global illumination, but it gives much better results and you can see you've got more options here for optimization and you can change the gamma but of course if you increase it it's gonna go up um that's why you see it goes up in in point in point ones meaning it goes up in tenths so that's something to bear in mind so now you need to go create some 3d text of course if you want 2d text you, you can just go to here and insert and insert a text spline but I'm just going to insert some 3D text by going to MoGraph and MoText. And under here, I'm going to type in Tron. And I'm going to use a font called Tr2N, uh, which kind of means Tron. 
um, it, this can be downloaded from thefont.com and I will include this in the project files. And now you can align it to the middle, so that's inserted in our document. And um, you can now increase the size, I'll make something like um, 60, yeah 60 is good. And now you might want to create your own texture for this, but I'm just going to add um, the same texture onto this because I find it gives kind of a nicer effect. Now, global illumination won't work because we don't have many lights to give it that real effect yet, but if we just render without it, and you're gonna see that right now it's looking really plain bluish text, but just wait a second and you'll see the glow. The glow comes at the end, so let's be patient, and bam. Just like that, we have, we have our, oops, we have our glowing effect. Now you can um, make just duplicate this texture by um, clicking on the texture over here, and then holding Command on Mac and Control on R, and then dragging to the right while this arrow is being displayed, and it'll automatically make a duplicate. The same can be done for objects. For example, if I have selected this Motex and I just Command and drag upwards, you can see I have another copy of it. Now let's just um, decrease the glow a bit. Um, let's just bring it down quite a bit and maybe the outer strength as well and yeah that seems a bit more humane if you will and natural and we can now see once it renders out that we have a better glow whoops sorry we don't see it yet because we haven't applied the new texture let's just delete this and drag the new material onto it and you can see it's automatically changed as well the whole layout and you can see it's gonna glow from within and the front glow was basically due to the intensity of the glow fil filter um, that we'd applied and you can see it's glowing more from within now you this might not suit you you might not like it and you can always take it back to 500 and um, maybe even say 180 if you want something intense now before I do a final render I'm just going to go back to my lighting and I'm gonna enter a light by clicking on this light icon for those of you who are on something previous to Cinema 4D R13 it will be located under the panel with the floor and the sky and all, the, and, and all that other good stuff so you want to position it somewhere to the top left of the text your top right if you're looking at it from front and just move it up, you know, you will automatically see that um, it's lighting up the whole scene. Um, it's even being lighted up in um, this um, perspective view, even when it's not rendered out. So if I just go back to my default view, rotate it around, um, um, I'm just going to set it to 200 because I find it looks better. And just under light, um, change the shadow type to area and make sure that global illumination is checked so that it uses the global illumination filters. And now you can check global illumination here and leave it to render out. Now I will include a movie that is rendered with um, th this exact project and it'll have basically screenshots to the Tron theme music and you'll see the different kind of effects you can make. You can also create simple animations that are not exactly in this font but uh, they'll appear to the beat of the Tron theme music. Now I think that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Um, I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you guys learned a few tips and tricks about Cinema 4D and Photoshop. And I Hope I've given you an in-depth knowledge on um, these two um, great graphic tools. Now, to see the full rendered, um, see the project files included on our website, and I will see you guys soon. So I hope you really liked this tutorial. For more, go to Ontis.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and join us on Twitter. Also, watch out for new tutorials. See you soon. Bye.